are a key predator, you know, they're at the top of the food chain, they're a keystone predator in their, in their habitat. And without that, those steps, you know, being met, you just wouldn't have otter recovery going on. Uh, so, you know, it's quite a success story in terms of conservation uh, in the UK. Uh, it's, but they're still not up there with uh, their previous levels. Uh, but the com combination of, of cleaning up the rivers, the combination of legislation which has um, controlled the use of, uh, of pesticides in agriculture is, uh, is really what's, what's led to this recovery. Um, going back to the brook again, this is another section where we've done quite a bit of work in the past. There's uh, quite a lot of tree clearance has been done up here. Um, to open up the canopy and, put, and allow that riparian vegetation, that marginal vegetation, to come back. Uh, I don't. You might have noticed as we were walking down, there's some nice open bits of the woodland. Before we, before that work was done, this was completely covered in trees all over. Um, something else that, that's been put in here is this. See this stock fence running along the boundary of this field. That's something that the trust has put in. Uh, that's to control stock uh, livestock especially dairy uh, cattle cows and whatnot um, to prevent them from coming into the brook uh, the reason for that is that they do quite a considerable amount of damage to the bank structure uh, in poaching and again uh, the, the knock-on effect is a loss of that riparian habitat a loss of, uh, of key water bowl habitat um, so it's another tool the fe uh, riverside fencing is another tool that's commonly used in this um, toolkit of, uh, of, of restoration techniques that we're using at the moment uh, to, to provide decent quality of habitat for water voles to expand into. So again, on the on the brook here, you have got quite a good vole population. Um, I don't think Charlie spotted anything by the looks of it. Uh, back to the monitoring again. The, the monitoring site for water voles is actually downstream here uh, in a town called Ashbourne. Uh, any, you might have passed through Ashbourne on your way on your travels. Uh, it's quite a nice little town, it's got a stop, market town. Um, the environment agency are busy at the moment doing some good defence work down there as well. So uh, they're actually uh, going to be putting in some um, in channel features uh, along the river section through the town. Uh, it's, had, it's been heavily modified in the past. Uh, there's a very large culvert tunnel where the river runs through it that goes underneath part of the uh, uh, So it's, it's an opportunity alongside this good mitigation work that they're doing to put in some uh, habitat creation, if you like, into the river channel. So what they're doing is putting some large boulders, some limestone boulders, into the toe of the bank where you've got otherwise concrete and stone revetments. Uh, which is going to provide some sinuosity uh, rather than having a straight channel which is featureless and, and allows a very fast flushing through. It's providing a, a, a more sinuous channel which allows water to stay in the catchment for longer basically. It also allows um, sediments to be trapped behind the boulders um, which will in turn vegetate up and start to become bank again whereas at the moment you've got pretty much what's a concrete trough almost uh, so the idea is that in the long term these boulders will stay in place and they'll become vegetated over uh, and hopefully it will become more like this um, which is you know, it's a, a rare thing in a lot of cities in the 60s concrete was the, was the fashion they didn't really consider the, uh, the river uh, and the impacts of that the, the natural work of the river on that on flood mitigation so uh, you know, it's, it's been well recognised now that trying to return rivers and wetlands to their natural state is actually very positive uh, in terms of controlling flooding. And I'm sure you've probably seen um, last year we had some terrible flooding up in Cumbria um, in a river system which, which gets an awful lot of water. You know, it has to be said. But this, you know, it was a, again, it was a one in 100 year flood event um, that seems to become more and more, more common. So it's a uh, very important step that they're taking, uh, even though it's only small fry, um, it needs, more of that needs to be done, more sections of the river in the country, especially in the large towns and cities where you've got sections of the river that have been heavily modified in the past. So, uh, so there you have it. Uh, has anyone got any questions?
about this section of the brook. Yeah, I take it you didn't find anything down there then. No droppings, no. No, uh, it's not any old water sprays either. No, uh, Steve. Yeah, yeah. No, it's, uh, I think Steve is pretty much uh, and, uh, and, and, and you know. So that, you, so that you've got a very clear picture of the uh, recent activity. Yeah, I know he's been, he's been brought, 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 brought